Hallo. My glasses on so I can see you. Hi, Sherry. How are you? Doing all right. How are you? Good. Very excited about this meeting. <laughs> I feel good. Thanks for asking. That was Siri, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's the most entertaining thing about Siri for me is that it hears my name and thinks people are talking to Siri and then it responds. So yeah, I used to set off phones around the building. <laughs> no, stop it. I have a cat that wants to join in. Their favorite thing. Sherry, I miss the cat business. He's fussing, and I don't know why. Oh, okay. Oh, I have an idea. I'll be right back. I'll say hi, everybody, since it's all so quiet with the cat gone. Steve. Hi. Hey, Steve. Hi, everybody. I can set the cat up to watch YouTube videos. I'll keep him entertained for at least 45 minutes. That's hilarious. It is a riot. So they have videos for cats. That's like birds and squirrels and stuff. Oh my God. And he loves it. Yesterday, he was sitting in front of the TV. TV's off. And he's sitting there meowing at the TV. I'm like, I have created a monster. Well, that sounds like torture of the cats because he can't get up. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, so he'll watch it and he'll look out the sliding glass door and be like, nope. And he'll watch the video some more and he'll look out the sliding glass door. Speaking of monsters, Godzilla versus King Kong comes out today. I know, I'm so excited. I've had a monster <laughs> for months. My gosh, when I was a kid, I used to be able to go watch the Godzilla movies for, I think, a quarter. On base in Panama. So. There's so many of them on HBO if you haven't checked it out. <laughs> like the old ones on up to new ones. Oh, that's great. Mothra is one of my favorites. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey, Chris. Sherry. So did you want to share the PowerPoint or do you want me to share it or? Um, I can open it up. Okay. Can I just give a little intro context here? Sure. Great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all everyone for joining us in the next part of our training series. Uh, what you're going to see today are uh, something you've actually heard me talk about for some time, but we're excited to show it to you and, and give you access to it. Um, these are the program health cards and this is something that I started talking to Sherry and Chris about when I when I joined a couple years ago um, and you may have noticed some shifts also in the uh, APAR process through the um, continuous improvement committee 
And this piece of data is meant to become part of that annual assessment that we do of our programs. Um, we had some of this data in various places, uh, but I'm hopeful that the, uh, bringing all of this together into one view for you for your program uh, gives you a broader, quick view of where your program is at at any given time. Uh, a couple things that I wanted to achieve with, with, with having these available to you. One is that we tend to look at this data as part of the annual review, but then not necessarily follow up on it throughout the year. So I wanted this to be an ongoing tool that you could look at and reference throughout the year so that let's say you identified an issue in your annual review of your program and came up with an initiative to address it. Um, this should give you a view of the data along the way to see how you're progressing and the impact of whatever intervention or uh, program change you may have implemented as a result of identifying an issue. Um, the other area that I really want us to develop our muscles in as an institution is really becoming more data informed and data driven. And so the revision of the continuous improvement committee's uh, APAR process uh, has happened on several fronts, but this data piece uh, and, and a health perspective is meant to add broader um, information about your program beyond just the uh, outcomes data that we have been looking at. So if in your annual review or even more so at a five-year review, um, you look at this data and you identify trends, um, let's say your new student enrollment is going down. Um, that's something we, we want to look at that that um, lends to a shrinking program over time. So we want to be able to get in there, work with Jason's team, talk about what we're doing with marketing, what we're doing with enrollment and advising, and see how we can drive more new students to that program. If we're seeing retention go down, we want to look at that and say, why are students not completing in this program? Um, sometimes it's curricular, sometimes it's not. Uh, but we want to dig in and be able to address those those issues. And so the data that you're seeing on this dashboard is now going to be part of those annual reviews and you'll be expected to kind of address the health of, of the program. Of course, if you're doing great marching along, we love that and we want to see that. But if there are issues in enrollments, retentions, completion rates, um, any of the other measures that, that we've got on this dashboard, we want to see a plan in that annual review to try to address that and correct that, um, that issue that is identified by this data. So that's just a quick uh, framing for what you're about to see here. I'll let Chris and Sherry talk about the amazing work that they've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you to get this done um, and build this dashboard for you and uh, what data you're seeing and what it means. Thank you, Scott. Uh, uh, Sherry, probably two to three years ago, recommended a book called, uh, I share my screen, Academic Prioritizing Academic Programs and Services. And um, uh, I, I, I read uh, parts of it, and I think Amy read parts of it. Scott, maybe you've read parts of it. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, so this is really kind of the inspiration behind the program health cards. Uh, specifically chapters five and six, of selected appropriate criteria and measuring, analyzing, and prioritizing. There's uh, a lot of different measurements uh, we could do. We, uh, and Sherry and, and with Amy, and I, I believe El Evelyn as well, um, along our director of finance picked uh, about 10 to start. But uh, hoping, you know, down the road, probably uh, with suggestions from uh, from everyone, we could add other measures. So, um, so we, I think somewhere along, there's a timeline in one of the next slides, but um, uh, data is presented based on a student declared major. There's, you can, uh, credit hours can be on student declared major or budget. Um, if uh, student declared major, meaning if a student is in the, uh, uh, the SBA, uh, any classes they take, um, even if they take a, uh, a math class or anything, the credit hours are attributed to the BSBA. Uh, and then we uh, chose a ranking. Uh, again, there's lots of ways we could measure attributes, but uh, 
if uh, there's an increase of 1%, uh, you got a 10, 10 points for attributed. If it was stable, five points. Stable uh, can be good. And um, if there's a decrease, uh, there are no points added. I kind of wanted to give the uh, introduction, but honestly, Sherry's the star of the show and did uh, sometimes I say 95%, I don't know, uh, 96%. So, uh, Sherry, do you want to buy from here? I can give me a thumbs up or when you want me to change the page. Thanks. It's a team effort. <laughs> um, these are the uh, criteria. Um, did you see here is the list of uh, things that we are measuring in the program health cards. Um, go ahead and flip to the next one. I think it has the timeline. So the project started in May of 2019 and the first draft at this represents the 2018-19 academic year. But when we come to things like retention and persistence, we actually have to go to prior years. Um, the plan is to update this uh, going forward. Um, but right now, what you're going to see today is actually the 1819 academic year. Um, is only the US population, uh, only degree seeking programs is, uh, I think only alt routes is in here that's not a degree seeking program. And even at that, it's only partial data because it's not a degree seeking program. Um, we couldn't measure things like completions because there's no posted degrees. But um, what we did, we used the book um, to help us come up with a bit of a method. Um, to rank the different programs based on um, the, the 10, 5, and 0 that they will get allotted um, based on the increase, uh, maintain, or decrease in the program. Um, and when you see the rankings, um, it's just to help us identify the programs that are doing well. And maybe we can look at best practices and apply them to other programs. So um, just. <laughs> take it as, as that right now. There's no drill down in this report because um, the different elements come from different Power BI reports. And I think if we put all of it in one Power BI file, it might crash. <laughs> so mm. so um, at best, maybe we can start to add links to other reports. And I think it did that for a couple of them. But, um, but doing a drill down would be a technology challenge. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, so if you look at these, um, if we're gonna apply these to the APAR, then we need to broaden the scope of the report because um, we're only looking at the US and I, uh, international student population. It doesn't go worldwide. So, and the APARs do go worldwide or maybe there's some way to segment it out. Um, but right now I wouldn't you just look at this and then you try to compare it to your APAR because it's not gonna line up. Um, Go ahead and let's see what's on the next slide. Definition. So I put all the definitions in here with the intent of being able to send this to you, um, the actual PowerPoint to you folks. Um, I can flip over to the, um, the actual dashboard. The definitions are on the landing page, but it's so uh, condensed <laughs> that it's hard to kind of pull out. It was a whole lot of information on one tab. Maybe I should split it out. But um, uh, so the different definitions are in here. Um, uh, this is the entire definition for the graduation rating because I wanted to include the time frames that are used to measure for each degree level. Um, so you can flip on to the next one, but all this stuff is is in there. Um, headcount is still the same measure and definition that we've been using for the last four years for headcount. Uh, inquiry ranking, that's going to be new. That'll be fun. Um, it's the number of inquiries by program. We have tools to collect and track that now, which is great. Next, uh, internal demand. This one was also one where we went back to the book to try to, to determine this because we wanted to demonstrate um, uh, how, mu how much crossover there was, especially in the undergraduate programs. Because um, I heard a comment one day that somebody said we could get over a program because there was a low head count in it. But I knew that there was so much of the content or so many courses within that program that were being used across other programs. And I was like, hold on, let's let's not make these. Di no, that person's not here anymore. So don't worry. Yeah, person's mm -hmm. not here anymore. Don't worry about it kind of thing. But I don't I wanted to uh, make sure that we had a way to demonstrate that with data going forward so that um, that assumption is never made again in the future. Um, so courses are programs that have courses where students from other 
programs are actually taking a heavy amount of credit hours are going to get a high ranking of 10. Um, if it's kind of balanced between the credit hours within the program and outside other programs taking those same courses, then it gets like five. Um, if there's no crossover, they get a zero. And I think there was only one program in the entire thing that gets a zero. And I think that was the, the DBA program. <laughs> This is, and this is mainly because uh, a lot of the data is student declared major. So uh, if they're taking, um, students are in the BSBA, but they're uh, taking a lot of BAM courses, for instance, uh, the BAM wouldn't get credit. But with this internal demand ranking, they, they do. So uh, that's kind of the, the thinking behind that. Yeah. Margin. Um, margin, actually, Chris would be best. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, a fully loaded margin. So uh, you have your direct cost and then you're, you're given an allocation based on enrollment and uh, the number of uh, uh, full-time or part-time faculty members. So how much basically services you use with HR and the, the business office. So it's a fully loaded margin. And uh, new students fairly, uh, Easy and then persistence, um, Sherry. Um, yeah, so the student's persistence from the very first term they enroll, and then it was measured for uh, the first four consecutive terms um, to get a persistence. And then, yeah. And retention is, that's all right, um, it's measured year to year. Um, if the student took a course in a year, did they come back in any term in the following year? Um, which is the same measure that we're using on the, the APARs. So that one lines up. Um, at this point, we could probably show them that. Yeah. I'm sure you want to drive on the showing the. Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Stop sharing. Oh, I know. It's here Stop somewhere. Sharing. There it goes. And I, 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 again, as Sherry's pulling this up, uh, just want to reiterate that this is kind of the beginning and um, Scott's. Kind of driving them, you know, if there's any measurements that you guys would like to see, obviously talk to Scott and Scott will talk to Sherry and me and Kevin Brown and, and uh, we'll see if we can add them. Move this around. So um, I went ahead yesterday and added uh, the tile to the program director dashboard for the program health cards. So um, it's in here with the rest of the tools that you already have in Power BI. And like I said, the, let's see if I can make this bigger. The landing, I knew this was gonna be small. <laughs> the landing page has a lot of information on it. Um, uh, I even have the, the actual book title on there in case somebody wants to use it. Um, live links to the other uh, dashboards, which are actually in the, the ones that are available are in the program director dashboard to begin with. So um, we have that. I hit my menu. So then um, the first tab of data is an overall rating system where you can see the, the values that were um, applied based on the different category for the 0, 5, and 10. And, um, and then that, those were added up to give the program the total rating. Um, the fun part is you can pick a category and uh, change the sorting on it to look at maybe the programs that are doing really well with retention and maybe visit, have conversations with them to figure out what they may be doing different from other programs uh, and then maybe share information um, to, to help each other out kind of. Um, that's That would be the goal, but um, that would be the way that I would use this information. Um, after that, there are many tabs. I think I got all the new acronyms correct. Let me know if I need to change them. But um, then you can actually see a little bit more uh, detail. I tried to do trend lines, a three-year trend lines for the data that we had that I could put into this uh, Power BI model um, so that we could see that. Um, there were other things that I only had just the, the rating to put in here. Um, and so that's why you'll see just those ratings for these. Um, and I tried to group these with kind of comparable programs so you can look this way, but um, let me know if you guys kind of want a different 
like we want to compare two programs to another, um, we'll have to make another tab to be able to do that. Um, I can well, flip through these. Sherry spent a lot of time trying to get all these little tabs and. Oh my gosh. <laughs> in one, yeah, one little presentable uh, um, block where you can see them. Yeah, they can't get any smaller. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll lose the little lines if we make them any smaller. Um, I think at this point I could just click through some of these unless somebody has a particular question. Yeah, were there any, um, I don't know if there's a question and answer se session for this, but. Um... I have one quick question. Um, when are we going to, when is the data going to be up to date? Is that a long-term plan? Um, are we adding them like a year after? How does that work? Um, that's a good question. Um, we need to make sure we have the, uh, the infrastructure to support being able to do this more quickly. It took, it took many months to get the first version of this. Um, it's, I mean, yeah, the, the plan is to, uh, it won't be, obviously won't be live today because if we're in the middle of fiscal year 21 and you're, or start, beginning of a new fiscal year and your new starts were way down, uh, just look at wonky data. But uh, the, yeah, the plan is to get 20 in here, but to, uh, to Sherry's point, um, I mean, we, we could probably give you a timeline, but it, it, um, the plan is to add 20 fairly soon. But I think the, uh, the data issue, the uh, incursion issue we had last year also threw. Um, Slowed us down considerably, yeah. Yeah. But we didn't want to delay any further getting this out, so. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys wanted to look at this quarterly, that's a completely different model that we would have to build um, to compare term over term because it, um, it can be unhelpful to compare one term or two terms of data to a full academic year. <laughs> So, um, so we would need to build a different one to do that. But um, thank you, Vicki. Um, yeah, this is definitely the first iteration. As we go forward, there's other data we'll be adding as well once we are further down the road with our ability to disaggregate this by different populations. You'll see some of that as well. That's, that's further to come uh, down the road. But um, yeah, this is a developing project shall we say this will be super cool and really helpful i have to say i was panicked for a moment when i looked at our graduation rate um but then thank you presley for uh putting that putting that out there for the for the information this is going to be phenomenal i am so excited thank you thank you thank you yeah and this is definitely lagging behind considerably. So what you're seeing this year in your APARS is even newer than what you're seeing here. Right. So, oops, nope, don't do that. Uh, loading. And I'm trying to get we, back to the chat. Um, if you give us uh, probably a couple weeks internally, we can probably give you a timeline on when we can have FY20 data. And FY20, again, FY21, would be uh, sometime uh, this fall, at the earliest. Yeah, we usually I usually build the APAR tool in September because that gives the complete academic year enough time to close and for everything, all the data to be settled and adjustments made. Um, so we usually do the annual bit in September each year. Um, yeah, we're hoping to be able to uh, dig deeper on this also. But we we've, we've got tools being built as we go. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I, I I'd be interested again to hear any other measurements that you know would would be helpful to look across all programs and and to compare you know uh, which ones are doing something well and which ones. Um, so yeah, any 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 other data points again. Can't promise we can get them for you, but we can try. Yeah, the data must be collected before it can be reported. <laughs> yes. I've got a quick question. Well, th thank you. This is great work. I know 
how much uh, effort and time goes in, in, into creating dashboards of this nature. Uh, a question I have is that, you know, uh, uh, for, for example, re retention rate, uh, you know, mo multiple factors will, will play a role in it. So what's our lo long-term goal to be able to identify uh, those factors so we can actually speak to the uh, right of stakeholders about it? <clears throat> so so again, I, I, I guess my question is about, you know, number one, re re realizing that, you know, something like re retention rate is impacted by a combination of factors. And then not, not number two, how are we going to identify those key factors so that we could, uh, you know, co come up with effective strategies to... Yeah, so this is intended to be, if you will, the flag to say, hey, look, there's an issue. What is it? Uh -huh. and, and, and then we have more work to do. So with retention in particular, I'd begin looking into quarter to quarter data. Right. I want to look at um, at what point in the program students are falling out. Okay. Um, I would look at grade distributions across courses uh, and try to correlate that to when students are falling out. Um, and then uh, if, if warranted, I've done um, focus groups with students, either those that are staying, why are you staying, or those that are falling out, why did you leave? Um, so there's a, a variety of approaches that, that we can take, but it, it really is a deeper dive into the specifics of the, the program to better understand what's going on. Sometimes we find there's a, like uh, this just happened in a program recently, um, we found that there was like a course that students were hitting and really struggling with, and that's where they were falling out. So, you know, if you can fix either the preparation they have going into that course, uh, they can be more successful and move on. Um, maybe they just need more support in that course. Maybe we need to redesign the course. So uh, it could be a variety of factors that are impacting students. Um, and we want to make sure that we're doing the sufficient research to better understand that. Sounds good. So that, that there is a plan to be able to uh, identify those key factors. Yep, absolutely. Perfect. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is really just meant to be a temperature check, if you will, to help to help identify where issues may may lie. Yeah, um, I think Chris shared this with one of the board members one day, and they were the, their comment on it was absolutely perfect and spot on and I loved it she said this is a great question prompt this is meant to meant to prompt you to ask questions why and then dig deeper so uh, I was like yay <laughs> it was like awesome but uh, yeah and there's uh, Scott has a retention committee where we've dug into a lot more detail um, work and, and focus on that that uh, so S Scott has some good initiatives there that um, will help that tremendously. There's your internal demand rating for the DBA you're mentioning. <laughs> oh yeah, the only one that doesn't have <laughs> shared shared courses. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, everybody. So everybody's interdependent. It's it's a it's an institution as a whole, and the programs uh, rely on each other. They're, they're not in a vacuum by any stretch, except for the DBA, maybe. <laughs> Jerry, I have another question for you. Yeah. I noticed that the institutional dashboard is gone with all the headcounts and enrollments and the, and the program director's headcount and enrollment window. It's only got 20, 30, 12, 13. Um, are, are we, is that going to be something, that, or is the institutional dashboard just gone for now and we're just going to use last quarter's data will be the most up-to-date data we'll see for the, for the program director dashboard? I lost control of the institutional and executive dashboards in May of last year. I no longer have control over them. I don't have the ability to set up um, automatic updates in the program director dashboard. I have to do it manually. Let me go look and see what's going on. I don't know, Scott may have a better answer, but I, I don't know that the intention was to take that away. Maybe we I need to talk to Kevin. No, it wasn't. It broke in the incursion and we haven't uh, gotten it fixed yet. Well, part of it's the Citrix and all that stuff. I can't get through 
to be, and Jim is working on it. But, yeah, it, it's not to, to take that away. I think that the intention is still have that data. Yeah. We want you to have more data, not less. <laughs> I can't scroll anymore. Just a few hundred. But yes, I would love for that to be up and working again. Um, Chris and I can pick that up with Kevin. They, but they do have access to the program directors. Yeah. Does everyone have access to the program directors? Yeah, let me look at the headcount because I thought it just. So I've got. So 2014 through 2021 is still building there. And then it looks like, so this is, this is separate from the institutional or executive dashboards altogether. These are things that I built to help us with the APARs over the years. So you're not able to see this, um, Presley? Oh no, I can see it. It's just it was the last time it was updated. You can see the top was January, so it doesn't have the two twenty thousand fourteen information live, and the old um, institutional dashboard used to have the live data as it was coming in every day. So that's just I like to keep track of my enrollments that way, but I can also do it manually by going through PeopleSoft. So um, until everything gets fixed, there's always a workaround. We hate manual. So but yes. many workarounds. <laughs> Let's uh, yeah. Let's kind of talk to, to Kevin and, and see if there's a, a plan to get that because um, you shouldn't have to do that manually. Okay. Um, at this point, I will let you guys have it. Um, so the it is out there. Um, if I can give, um, I guess Mariah the the link to the program director dashboard in case somebody's forgotten where it is. Um, to share with you guys as well as the PowerPoint if you need it, if you think you need the, the definitions in a nice larger font, <laughs> I can do that also. Accessibility tools are helpful for that. Oh, sorry, Greg. He says he feels isolated. <laughs> this is good. I, I um, just one more time, just Shout out to Sherry, who uh, oh, absolutely yes, yeah, yes. worked really hard on this and really hard on a lot of stuff, honestly, and uh, really uh, just really hard on this. So, thank you, Sherry. Oh, thank you. It it was a uh, as a neat project. It's, I feel like it's just beginning. So, it is. <laughs> there there are so many more things that we could do. We just need to time, and time is, yeah, it's, it's resource time and resources. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's all we might have had on the program health cards. If, if there's more questions, though, be open to them. Great. Well, we don't need to take extra time. We know everyone's got busy, so we can give you some time back. But um, dig in to these dashboards. Um, uh, actually, Sherry, can you share where they can find them? Oh, yeah, it was on the program di director dashboard. I went ahead and put a tile on the, the program director dashboard so they can click into it. It's and it's loaded in the it's loaded in the uh, city workspace. Fantastic. So get in poke around if you have questions about what the data means or um, what you want to do about it. <laughs> uh, let me know. I'll um, be joining some department meetings and school meetings uh, over the next couple months. So if you have questions, we can we can talk then, and of course, you're always welcome to just reach out via Teams or email, and I'm happy to talk about it. There are no other questions, and we will uh, give you the rest of the hour back. Thank you so much, Chris and Sherry, for sharing this with us and for your hard work to pull this together. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for all everyone does. I, I uh, encourage you to read the book if you're able to check it out, Prioritize Academic <laughs> Programs and Services, Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> She has head right by her. She holds it up every other meeting, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> I have it right here as well. So. Yeah. 
right. and if somebody comes across a newer edition yeah. oh yeah there you go <laughs> be great thank right. you thank you all yeah.